So I've had this problem for a really long time where I find myself just getting sucked into my phone. I think it's just for a few seconds here and there to look at a headline, but in reality it looks a little more like this. It's not a great look, and honestly, I'd like to set a better example for my kids. Hey. Recently, in order to try to break me of this habit, I've been asking my wife to film me so I can actually see what this looks like. I don't know that I could say it's done anything to cure me, but it definitely is effective in making me stop. Now, you can see evidence of surveillance as a means of curbing bad behavior all over. And in workplaces, many employees have been under surveillance by their employer for a long time. But as the pandemic has forced many jobs to be remote, that surveillance has now followed employees home. Some companies this morning are starting to monitor their employees more closely than ever. They track what you click on, where you go on the internet, everything you type into your keyboard. Employee surveillance has boomed during the pandemic and the software that goes along with it is flying off the virtual shelves. And these tools do more than just watch employees. They analyze, rank, and report on their productivity. And it's likely to become just another part of our future of work. Now, digital privacy in the workplace isn't a new subject. When you're at work on a computer, you might think that what you're doing is actually private. Well, you might want to think again. There's a pretty good chance your boss is eavesdropping on everything you do. As long as there's been closed circuit TV, there have been cameras in offices that monitor what people are doing. This is Bennett Cyphers, a staff technologist for the Electronic Frontiers Foundation. He's been investigating recent employee surveillance technology, or as he refers to it, bossware. We looked at about a, a dozen different uh, products in this space, and what all of them do uh, to start is monitor like activity, like high level activity. So it's like, what apps are people using and what websites are they visiting? But as Bennett explains, many of these software tools go a few steps further, capturing screenshots of your desktop or recording every time you move your mouse and logging every single key that you strike. If you like log into your bank account or something and when you type in your password, it shows up as a bunch of stars or a bunch of dots. A key logger or keystroke logger will have collected every input that went in to that website. And so they would, they would be able to see your password as well, even if you can't actually see it on the screen. There are some products that do let their clients turn on webcams and microphones secretly and record through people's devices. But I really I can't say how much adoption they have. And I do think that that is not the norm. Big Brother, perhaps, but it's perfectly legal for businesses to keep an unblinking eye on employees, as long as they disclose it before they do it. Even prior to the pandemic, there were already signs that this kind of software was on the rise. A 2018 survey by Gartner of 239 large companies showed a dramatic rise in the adoption of this software. And in the time of COVID, for employers, many see it as a means to return some sense of normalcy. You know, traditionally, pre, in a pre-COVID, pre-work-from-home universe, um, companies had line of sight. I'm a manager, I'm a supervisor, I'm an owner, I show up at the office, and I can see who's there, I can see who's not there, I can see whether people are sitting at their desk and working, or whether they're on their phone with their feet kicked up, I can see all those things. This is Brad Miller. He's the CEO of the surveillance software maker InterGuard, and he says that after the pandemic struck, the company saw over a 300% growth in their customer base. Sharing this tab. Okay, good. So it's sharing. Okay, so you, you can see my screen. I can see your screen, yep. You're, you're looking at, at the dashboard here, um, and the dashboard uh, has a few different views depending upon what part of the company you're in. So you're looking at the chart view right now, which is looking at high-level data is typically used by executives. The next view, which is probably the most used view, is the user view. What this view is trying to create is trying to recreate that line of sight that they used to have when everybody was in the office. In case this isn't obvious, all the data here is fake, and they're using characters from the show The Office to essentially illustrate some of the selling points of the software. And so as an example here, I can see Andy is a 40 hour a week employee. He was logged in this week for 37 of those 40 hours. And you know, not all of that time that he was logged in was active. And then not all of the active time is productive. Each of these circles kind of gives a breakdown of an employee's day. Gray is idle, blue is productive, red is not productive, and yellow is neutral. 
And so in, in, in a very quick view, I can just quickly you know, glance at my employees. Did they show up for work? Are they generally showing up on time? Do they look, you know, reasonably busy? And if something seems off, Intergard gives you more tools to sort of drill down into a boy's day. If you see something suspicious, like, say, a lot of inactive time, you can investigate to see their calendar. A large chunk of inactive time can suddenly be explained away by a party planning committee meeting followed by an hour-long film screening. You could also choose to flip through screenshots of what the employee was doing on their computer that day, or even set up an alert word so that you can be notified if something suspicious is happening right away. I can single in on this one here, you know, Jim Halpert. It was a keystroke data type, and I can see that there was a couple of alert words highlighted in here, you know, uh, the word file and the word Kaplan. The idea here is to sort of catch an employee who might be, say, sharing client files with a competitor. And while there are a lot of other tools here to help investigate different forms of employee theft or inappropriate behavior, Brad says that lately that's not the most common use. What's different now in the world of COVID and work from home is that we now see big companies uh, trying to not just use us for investigations, but rather more in terms of confirming uh, time attendance and productivity. Scoring productivity or ranking productivity is found in many of the different employee surveillance software on the market today. InterGuard allows admins to flag what programs or websites are considered productive, unproductive, or neutral. And using a fairly simple equation adds them all together to generate a daily score for each employee. And you know, in our data-driven world, there is something about this that makes a lot of sense to me. I mentioned before my issue with looking at my phone too much. Well, applications like screen time on my iPhone will show me a day-to-day -day collection of how I spend my time, making being aware of, say, how obsessive I am with my fantasy football team easier than ever before. Mass surveillance is often convenient. That's, that's why the people who do it do it. One thing that surveillance does sort of across the board in every context that's used in is exacerbate power imbalances, whether it's... Um, a government surveilling its people, whether it's like a giant corporation surveilling um, its customers and its competitors, or whether it's in this case, like a company surveilling the people who work for it. Your, your employer has interests which um, involve you and don't always align with yours. And there are frequently situations where your employer might want to know uh, what you were doing last night or might want to like dig up dirt or like no no like have some sort of weapon to use against you in, in some sort of dispute between you and the company. Brad points to features in InterGuard meant to protect the privacy of employees, like being able to set the working hours for users so you can avoid capturing any non-work related actions. But he also makes it clear that for the system to work for both employee and employer, it needs to be done transparently. We tend to educate our customers to be transparent with the use of the software. There's really no point if you want to use InterGuard as a tool to manage productivity. If I don't tell you it's on there, well, then how am I getting value from it? I mean, because fundamentally, I want to be able to say, hey, I, I see you're only logged in four hours today. Where did I get that information from? You know, we all behave a little bit better when we know someone's watching. And it's a, it, it, it's a tricky line for sure. Um, but in my view, that can all be navigated easily by being transparent. Typically, people default to technology. Something's wrong. Quick, let's buy a machine or a program. This is Marie Gervais. She's the CEO of Shift Management, a company that specializes in improving workspaces through leadership development. And from talking to her, she points out that transparency is really just a starting point as an employer. You also need to think about your intent. So if your intent is to hone down and just like, who can I catch doing something wrong? Well, that's all your energy is going to go to that. But if your energy is, hmm, how can we make things better? And how can I resource you so we can make things better? What you pay attention to grows. But if you're looking to catch mistakes, that's all you're going to catch. And Marie explains that in order to have focus intent, you really need to shorten the amount of time that you use this technology. So if you want to roll out surveillance software, say this is what we're thinking of doing and this is why. And then the target is, needs to be short. So, okay, we're going to try this for a week. We're going to try this for two weeks. We're going to try this for a month. No longer than that, because then people just get really frustrated. If everyone knows they're being surveilled all the time, they act differently. And they are more afraid of stepping outside of the bounds of 
what they consider to be the behavior that is expected of them. I mean, if you're a very controlling manager, maybe that's your goal. But in a lot of cases, I think that can actually hurt uh, productivity and creativity. I have an employee who had surveillance software with her previous employer. I mean, if she would be gone to the bathroom, the, uh, the employer would ask her, where were you? You were gone for four point, you know, six minutes. And she'd go, I was in the bathroom. Well, why? When she started working with me, she said, where's your surveillance software? And I said, I don't have any. She went, woohoo. And then what happened is she stopped producing stuff because she was so used to being treated like a assembly line employee that she didn't have the skills to actually run her job properly. For three years, she was under the surveillance software and she had to kind of heal from it actually because it wasn't used properly. As the current evidence suggests, the future of work is likely to feature more remote or flexible working employees post-COVID. And it's likely many of these employees will need to use some kind of surveillance software. As an employee, if I knew that the quid pro quo for me being able to continue working from home post-COVID was knowing that my employer was confirming my productivity and attendance, I make that trade every day and twice on Sunday. We're at sort of this inflection point where it's been around, but it's getting a lot more popular and it's going to be a lot more prevalent going forward. And I think it's just dawning on a lot of people that they might be working in this world in the future where their device is being surveilled, they're being surveilled all the time. And there's whenever you have that sort of change, especially rapid change, that is an opportunity to change the, the way the world works around it. And I think we can do the same thing in the worker privacy space.